we have um, Ms. Jane Cavado, the principal at Ridgewood Middle School. She has actually two separate uh, presentations to make. Physically handicapped kids in our district. 
and so I turned this into a uh, service learning opportunity for my students. And I was inspired by uh, the organization that they're a nonprofit organization based out of New York called the Adaptive Design Incorporation. And what they do up there is they make their custom devices 100% uh, out of cardboard and glue. And so uh, I've, I've gotten lots of donations from different parents in, in our district and in, in my classroom. And uh, the cardboard has been overflowing in my class, but we, we take this cardboard and we glue it together. And uh, you know, with the help of, of some engineers and uh, some physical therapists in our district, uh, the, the structural integrity of the cardboard is, is amazing. And it's a very, very uh, durable material and, and it's recycled. And so the kids, we get to, to make this, and I, I bring in power tools, and they get to uh, design custom devices, and uh, they get to cut them out, and we assemble them. And uh, we started in Ridgewood, we started in our own uh, self-contained classroom with Ms. Erickson's class, and we made her some, some specialized devices. Um, it's a semester class, so next semester we're planning on going to Longdale Elementary School, and I've already met with uh, Ms. Hall and uh, their PI room, and, and I, I kind of sat with them and then find out, find out what their needs are um, for different equipment, and uh, they need a lot of equipment. And um, so talking with them, and they're just excited and thrilled to be having some customized devices. And so uh, my students were going to go over there on a cool field trip, and we're going to uh, meet the students, and uh, my students are going to get to interact with them, and I'm going to talk with their, their teacher, parents, and uh, the physical therapist that's uh, you know on staff here in the district. And we're going to make them some specialized custom devices out of cardboard, and uh, by the end of the semester, you know, turn those over to the for the students to use. And uh, it's just this amazing opportunity, great service learning opportunity for the kids. And I'm proud of the kids that they're taking this project and uh, they're running with it. And, and my big thing that I want to get across to them that it's not about them. It's not about what you know. What look at me, look what I made. It's it's about the kids and, and what what they need. And so that that's what's awesome for my students to be able to see and have that opportunity to uh, meet those needs. So uh, my students put together this uh, PowerPoint. You know, we can go through it real quick. Like there's a lot of pictures of them working in the classroom, uh, working with the material, cutting the material. Uh, we made some therapeutic stools uh, that can be used in the classroom uh, to help strengthen core muscles and lower back. Uh, I have a sports medicine background um, before I became a teacher. Um, so I, I kind of understand that aspect of the therapeutic aspects of the devices, and we made a set of cubbies, um, cabinets uh, for Mrs. Erickson as a surprise, she doesn't know she's receiving those yet, uh, but it's, it's all to help her kids and, and you know, meet their needs. Uh, but the students made this uh, presentation, I wouldn't go through it, it's, it's real brief, um, but it shows them working and uh, the hands-on experience is, is amazing for the students. Hand jigsaw that we got to use, and so we're very 
very appreciative of the Fox Music Foundation to, to grant us that money and hopefully we, we can keep going with, with this and, and stay further. That is all hard work.
choking victim with the full airway obstruction. Your quick action and dedication to serve others is a true example of heroism. Because of your unselfish efforts and whatever it takes attitude, the Rock Community Fire Protection District honors you for the Good Citizen Lifesaver Award. And we present this in the highest honor of the fire service. And on behalf of Chief Allred, Board of Directors, and all the firefighters at Rock Community Fire Protection District, we say congratulations, Jill. Yes, we have two public comments before uh, we introduce them. I just want to remind the, those speaking tonight, uh, they have three minutes to speak. The first speaker is Mr. James Osha. How do you follow that up? <laughs> Congratulations, Jill. Um, actually, I've got four points tonight. On the first one, I was looking through the board packet today, and I understand why the meetings were needed, but for the board meetings other than the, what's held here, where does that get approval for payment from the Fox accounts? Number two, on the district policies, I know we're going, you guys are going through some of them and updating some, rewriting some. Is there ever going to be a place that people can go to the website and call those up so they can see them? So that way they're we can see that they're up to date or say, hey, you know, notice that this is kind of behind. On number three, I noticed two, and we've, Mr. Crutchley has talked about the solar panels on the schools, but I also noticed so the schools that were listed, there's still some bills being paid to Ameren. Are these schools fully offline? Or are these just parts of the schools being solar powered? All I'm asking is, is how is that to work and or to save the district money? And on number four, on in November 20th, the Lonedale Elementary uh, kids, and just so you know, my daughter goes to Simpson, so I'm not propping my daughter's school. The uh, organization of Annie's Hope, which helps them uh, with ch children's grief which was Children's Grief Awareness on the 20th, they made butterflies and wrote down the name of somebody that they knew, a loved one, a family member, friend that died, and they put them up on the wall so they could find out and realize that they weren't the only one that has ever suffered a loss or anything, whether close or whatnot. So I'd just like to you know, give recognition to the uh, kids and the staff at Lonedale. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I think we can address a couple of those uh, meetings that we've had. I'm not sure I understand the question on number one, but there's only one meeting that I'm aware of that we've ever had off-site, and that was in the selection of our new superintendent. Um, it was off-site because it was an eight-hour, all-day all long meeting, and we needed access to things like bathrooms and coffee and food and that kind of stuff. As far as the approval goes, I, I, as far as the I'm not, was your question, when was it approved, or what was your question? How is, how is that approved? Or how is that process decided? I mean, I mean, you guys heard schools and, you know, certain expenditures, you know, you go every month on paying the bills. Part of the operating budget? Yeah, it's a part yeah. of the operating budget. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
board policies, I believe it's presently on the website. The existing policies in place are presently there digitally, and we are in the review process of upgrading them. I believe they're there presently. I've looked at them recently. Yeah. Are when they the still there now? When the system came up, they dropped the names of them and only have the policy number in this time. Yeah. No Pol policies are online. Individually on each one and change it. Board. Under it's board. under board, board of Education. Yeah. Policies and regulations, it's on there. Changes Turn that mic down. Yeah, so it, it, I look at them from time to time. They definitely need additional refreshing. We're working on them, uh, and we will continue to work on them until they're complete. And then once they're complete, almost the day you put them up, they're a little bit incomplete, and you constantly rework them from, from that point forward. But they're on there now, and we'll continue to work on them. Solar panels, can you help me with that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so, solar, solar panels um, were never going to power 100% of a building. The, the state regulates solar panels. We can only um, have a maximum of a 25 kilowatt array. And uh, that comes out to, I want to say about 10% of the power of a building probably could be even less than that. Um, so how does that save us money? Well, any electricity that we produce with the solar panels is in place of electricity that we would purchase. So um, today, I don't even know if it was sunny out today. If it was sunny out today and we're producing electricity, then we are offsetting electricity we would be using for Ameren. However, so if we produce 25 kilowatts or however much you can produce in a day, it offsets that much power that you would be using from Ameren. I, I might comment that, the, the, well, the solar panels, I believe they're effective. I believe they're the right thing to do. I think it's ethically the right responsibility to take. It is a tiny percentage in the way that you benefit from it is over a 20-year period. So it's, it's, it's no large dollar yeah. amount by any means. But I still think it's the right thing to do, and a few dollars saved is, is beneficial. Yeah. If you remember when we first proposed it, we were looking at about thirty to $40,000 a year in savings on our electric bill. We pay a million dollars um, in electric bills a year. I think year. it's a 2% estimate of our entire, yeah. of our entire budget, 2% <laughs> savings. It's something. Our next co comment is from Mr. Scott Reed. Good evening. This is the fourth time this school year that I stand before this panel and voice my opinions about the circumstances and actions that have done so much to harm our district. I have been very critical of the administration and one or more of our school board members. I have not and will not give up on my pursuit for the truth and for accountability for those who have damaged our district. However, tonight I wish to use my time to spread a little holiday spirit and say thank you to each and every one of you for your countless hours of work to rebuild our district and the effort to earn back the trust and confidence of your employees, parents, and taxpayers. I am aware that our school board members have volunteered countless extra hours and have done an amazing job overall to answer the public and to steer the district into the positive direction. Members of our administration have done an equally good job overall supporting the schools and showing that they can, in fact, act in the best interest of our students with effective oversight. If our district had been managed in the past as well as it has been done so far this year, we would have something to be very proud of, not that we shouldn't be proud of the progress made so far. I wish all of you and your families a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year with continued progress in semester two, and the new year with the addition of Dr. Whipke. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. That was appreciated. Thanks. Um, 3.1, dropout rate, Dr. Rizzi. I'm proud to announce that our current dropout rate is 0.64. It's significantly lower than it was, has been in the last three years. Uh, 3.2, financial report is in the late materials. Mr. Brazil. <clears throat> the financial report in the late materials is for the five-month month period ended November 30 of 2014. You'll see a financial report in there that we've presented every month. You'll also see an additional schedule that does some uh, comparative month-by-month -month comparisons this year over last year. And I'd like to point out that uh, we have been able to curtail spending dramatically, uh, and it's uh, improving each month. 
um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions about that report at any time. But uh, we're very much on target to achieve our financial objectives for this school year. Any questions or comments on that? Uh, 3.3, average daily attendance, Dr. Rizzi. Again, I'm, I'm proud to announce that our uh, average daily attendance is 95.71 uh, year to date. And if we go a year ago, we're, we're just a slightly above that. So we continually improve and we appreciate all the work from our students, staff, and administration. How, how do we compare to a year ago? We are, we are at 95.71 presently. And last year at this time, we were at 95.93. So okay. we're right there. I got it. Thank you. Uh, 3.4 program evaluations. Dr. Rizzi. Each year, the district uh, completes an evaluation of all their programs. Uh, the evalu evaluations include a review of the district's goals, analysis, and data and action plans for this year and the, the previous year. Um, these program evaluations include food service, transportation, facilities management, health services, homeless migrant education, technology, and safety and security. These are uh, for your review. There's a whole other list there. I'm sorry, and there's additional. Uh, there's preschool, early childhood, library and media, guidance and counseling, curriculum, school climate, uh, community education, and at-risk programs. Thank you. 3.5. Dr. Rizzi, you're on a roll there. Um, in front of you today, we have a memorandum of understanding for uh, K-9 walkthroughs, and what that is is um, the Department of uh, the Arizona Police Department and the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department have offered their services to help us be proactive in keeping our schools safe and drug and, and drug and alcohol free. Um, we would uh, they're going to provide their services for the K-9s to come in our buildings and search hallways and lockers. Uh, it's, it's an intrusive. Uh, an intrusive approach to uh, keeping our schools safe, and these will be um, at, at random times. Um, and we uh, have presented the member understanding for your information this evening. So, on that particular one, that'll be for action in a month in yes. order to accept that. Yeah, we, we will be presenting this for action for your approval in the next board meeting. So, we've got a month to go through it in detail, ask questions, all that. That's time. correct. All right, perfect. Any comments? Question? Okay. Uh, 3.6 curriculum, Mr. Crutchley. Character education and leadership are foundational in the success of our four middle schools. The middle schools have been offering character education and leadership classes for 19 years that create a sense of belonging and autonomy for students and create a culture and climate of learning in the school. There's never been a written district curriculum that supports these types of classes in the middle schools. There were six teachers and one administrator who wrote this curriculum around the 11 principles of character education, which comes from uh, Character, uh, the National Character Education Association. Uh, these principles and standards come from the Character Education Partnership, which is the national organization of character education and sponsors the National Schools of Character program, which we have participated in. So this is, uh, for information, we'll be asking for approval for this curriculum next month. Three point seven, uh, Missouri Learning Standards Update, Dr. Rizzi. Tonight, our Executive Director for Curriculum Instruction, Ms. Kristen Pelster, is going to present a history of the Missouri Learning Standards and also give us information on the House Bill 1490. She will also be discussing tools that we can utilize in our district to meet the Missouri Learning Standards and to do this efficiently and effectively within the district. Thank you, Dr. Rizzi. Um, like Dr. Rizzi said, uh, tonight my purpose is to give you a brief timeline of where we are now with our academic learning standards, um, to talk to you a little bit about what's coming down the line with new standards being developed for the state of Missouri, and also how I feel that possibly Fox could help with the upcoming rewriting of standards and curriculum. So I want to go back to 2010 when the state of Missouri first adopted the Common Core State Standards. The Common Core State Standards are st academic standards for English language arts 
and math. And the state adopted these as part as the Missouri Learning Standards. In January of 2013, I was hired to head up the rewriting of the K-12 ELA and math curriculum to align with these new standards. So last year, a team of 60 teachers and administrators rewrote the K-12 ELA and math standards for implementation this school year with state testing over the new standards occurring this spring. Well, as we all know, there has been much controversy over the Common Core State Standards, which led the Missouri Legislature and the Governor to pass House Bill 1490 this past summer. This bill requires the State Board of Education to convene separate work groups to evaluate, modify, revise, and develop academic learning standards in English language arts, math, science, and social studies. Committees were formed and work on these new standards began October 1st of 2014. The committees are expected to submit the updated learning expectations to the State Board of Education by October 1st of 2015. Districts will then be expected to rewrite curriculum for K-2 ELA, math, science, and social studies by the end of the 2015-16 school year with the expectation of implementation of these standards in the 2016-17 school year with state assessments being aligned to these standards for the 2017 state testing. Of course, this is a huge and daunting task for all districts in the state of Missouri. When Fox wrote curriculums in two core subject areas last year, it was a huge undertaking and rarely ever, ever done by districts. So districts all over the state are talking about how school districts are going to accomplish rewriting four K-12 curriculums in less than a year, which leads me to discuss our curriculum platform. So basically, a curriculum platform is where the district curriculum is housed and stored. Back when I first started teaching a long time ago, our curriculum came in the form of paper in, three, in these huge three ring binders. Well, in 2006, the district purchased a product called ArcAline as our curriculum platform. This platform is basically an electronic storage system for all the paper that was in the three ring binders. In this day of technology and curriculum development, the platform is very simplistic and does not offer the writers or the users components I feel are necessary for strong curriculum implementation for student achievement. So I'd like to share with you our possible next step. The state curriculum product uh, platform is a product called BYOC, which stands for Build Your Own Curriculum. Over half the districts in the state of Missouri use BYOC as their curriculum platform. In your packet of information that you were given, you will see all the Missouri districts currently using BYOC, including some of the top performing school districts in the state of Missouri, such as Lindbergh, Pattonville, Clayton, Blue Springs, Liberty on the Kansas City side. So I'd like to share with you some of the highlights of BYOC. And these highlights that I share, currently the, our curriculum platform that we use cannot do. First of all, for the teachers. BYOC allows teachers to easily locate current curriculum and resources. They also can store their own resources on this curriculum platform. They also can access curriculum and resources from all school districts that are BYOC users. So, I'm going to give you a, a, an example of this. So a sixth grade teacher um, is teaching the standard ELA standard of drawing inferences from text. So what the resources she's using just aren't really working. The kids aren't getting it, and, she, and this teacher is getting frustrated. She said, I need, a, I need a new and fresh idea on how to teach this standard. Well, this teacher can go into BYOC and pull up any district, pull up how does Clayton teach drawing inferences from text in sixth grade and have the curriculum and the resources that Clayton uses to teach the standard. And, and this teacher could say, oh, I, I love this. I want to try this out with my, with my students. So basically, BYOC has developed uh, thousands of teachers having a share fair with their resources and with their curriculum. It allows parents and students to view curriculum. I love this for uh, being a parent of a student. So I, at any time, I could go in and see everything that my students were learning and going to learn for the school year. In fact, when I was at the state curriculum conference, I was talking to an educator who is a parent um, 
of students in a BYOC district. And she says, I love it. My husband and I get on there. We see what our kids are going to learn, what they're going to be learning in the next couple months. And we um, we plan family outings. Like if they're going to be learning about astronomy in the solar system, we might take them down to the science center, to the planetarium. And we really try to support at home what the school is trying to support with curriculum because we, we are informed about what they are learning and going to be learning. BYOC allows administrators access to learning paths for all grades and subject areas and, view, and they can view this information by standards, teaching objectives, and key concepts. BYOC will run reports that will generate data as to where our weaknesses and holes are in our curriculum. So for example, going back to that sixth grade st uh, standard of teaching inferences from a text. So we get our state assessments back and we look at sixth grade as a whole and, we, and the sixth grade just bombed the standard on our state assessment. Well, we can instantly run a report where we can look at, okay, obviously drawing inferences from text is something we should be teaching every year. So we can see, when do we start teaching this? Are we teaching this in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade? How much are we covering this? How much time in sixth grade are we spending teaching this standard? And we can look at science, social studies, and math. All those subject areas should be drawing inferences from text. And we can immediately see where our holes are in our curriculum so we can address that. And with our district becoming more data driven, I think this is, this is a, a wonderful um, part of this system. This system will assist teachers and administrators with requirements for the new performance-based teacher evaluation and the state provides user groups and training for curriculum directors and coordinators. So currently I am a member of the Leadership Advisory Council at Education Plus. And Edu Education Plus is a consortium of 61 school districts in the St. Louis region that pay membership dues in return for lower cost educational services, which Fox is a member of. The council has been discussing ways to help the St. Louis school districts when the new standards are released, especially those districts that do not have extensive curriculum departments. One suggestion is to have school districts, which have the same curriculum writing platforms, collaborate on curriculum writing with an expert in that subject area. This would save on time and the number of teachers being pulled out of the classrooms to write curriculum. Since we do not have an extensive curriculum department, this would be a huge help for us at Fox. And I want to be prepared and ready to go if Education Plus decides to go forward with this initiative. So, in to sum it all up, I believe the purchase of BYOC as our curriculum writing platform is in the best interest for our students, parents, teachers, and administrators. <laughs> I've given you an information package on BYOC, and currently the company is willing to give us 18 months for the price of 12 so we can get a head start on launching BYOC if we choose to go in that direction. This item is for information this month, so please feel free to contact me at any time with any questions you may have, and I thank you for your consideration in this proposal. Thank you. All right, uh, 4.0 consent grouping for business items uh, action. 4.1, uh, uh, Dr. Bra or Mr. Brazil. Daniel Jones and Associates was the uh, CPA firm that performed this year's financial audit for the year ended June 30 of 2014. Uh, a member of their uh, team is here tonight, Mr. Jacob Meyer. He's sitting back there. Uh, this report uh, was dated yesterday, December 15th, uh, and we received it electronically yesterday. We received the paper documents today. Um, it's a large document, and I would not expect you to absorb it all in a few hours. Um, so if you wish to go through this in detail, and I recommend that you do, I suggest we, we set a meeting or put it on an agenda <laughs> in the future so that uh, we can present it in detail and a representative from Daniel Jones can go through it. I specifically ask Mr. Al Kirch officer, the president of their firm, to uh, lead you through this. Uh, in the meantime, I do need you to make a motion accepting this report uh, so that we can timely file this with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed as we're required by law to do so. 
uh, and your motion is merely an acknowledgement that we have received uh, the report. The report is really in two parts. Uh, there is the large audit report itself, and then there is a letter to management uh, dated the same date of December 14th. You will find within the management letter uh, three particular findings that we will note, um, and one relates to uh, misuse of credit cards, which uh, we have corrected. Um, another relates to travel uh, expenditures, which we have brought back into line. And the third relates to management override of uh, district policies, which we have again reinforced the correct way of doing that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we need to remind you of that. Uh, this, again, I request that you make a motion accepting this report tonight and we will seek to schedule this on a January agenda for a further discussion. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Questions or comments? Thanks. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, 4.2 insurance purchase, Mr. Brazil. Uh, in your late materials, you should have received a renewal proposal for certain lines of insurance, which include uh, property, crime, general liability, and educator liability, along with some excess earthquake. Um, this year's premium that's been uh, determined to date through the um, solicitation process performed by our broker uh, yields a premium of $447,647. It's up slightly from last year. Um, I've instructed the broker uh, after some discussion of these to seek to negotiate these premiums further and I'm hopeful that before January 1 that we will indeed gain some cost savings from these quotes. Um, but tonight I would ask your approval of the $447,000 uh, figure as the premium. Uh, there's a detail of which of all the coverages and the various insurance providers uh, in this document. I won't go into those in detail, but unless you want me to. Do I have a motion? Second? Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 4.3, program evaluations. Dr. Rizzi. Yes, in our last meeting, you were presented with program evaluations of instruction, special education, gifted education, technical education, federal programs, titles one, two, and three. Uh, the state requires in order uh, for us to be in compliance with the MSEP that the board approves the district programs. We ask that you approve as presented. Do I have a motion? motion. Second. Questions, comments? All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carries. 4.4, Mr. Crutchley. Before you, before you tonight, you have um, administrative contract renewals. Uh, you have a list of administrators that were asking um, approval for uh, offering of a uh, contract for next year. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Questions or comments? Dave. I'm just going to read this. Uh, as a member of the Board of Education elected by my constituents, I believe it is my responsibility to make informed and educated decisions. This process includes multi factors, but the first and foremost comes what is best for the students in this district. Putting in place administrators whose jobs Part of lead and motivate a team of individuals to the level of excellence is no small task. Each administrator has been selected as a result of outstanding qualities and characteristics. With this position comes accountability and evaluation process put in place to determine the performance level of each person. With that being said, I have done my due diligence in gathering and reviewing pertinent information necessary in making an informed decision. Based on this information available to me and considering what would be the best in the best interest of this district, I believe that all the administrators should be offered a contract renewal. That's no 
only comment I got. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? No. I abstain. All right, motion carries. Four, uh, 4 point five, 2014, 2015 budget amendment, Mr. Brazil. One of the challenges we've seen in the budget uh, is that instructional budgets in our buildings have been underfunded and even declining in recent years. Um, at this point in time, many of our buildings are already pretty much exhausted their allocation for the current year. Um, we're proposing to uh, increase the um, uh, or supplement the instructional budgets at each building at this time. Um, we're proposing to increase the el elementary buildings to $30 per student, the middle schools to 35 and the high schools to 40 uh, They've all been funded around $19 previously at the beginning of the year. That's a per classroom number? Is that That's a per student, per student number. Per student number. Uh, overall, this budget increase will uh, cost us $174,000. We are seeing some uh, our revenue from the state come in a little strong, and that will be the source of funds to fund this particular increase. We ask for your approval of this budget amendment. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, sir. Mr. Krupa. I think this is great that we're able to up this level. Put that microphone over there. Okay. Everybody hear me? <clears throat> I think this is great that we can up this level of funding for the, the schools, for the kids, for the principals. This is just great. I'm glad whoever figured this out, figured <coughs> it out. And we're going to do something good because everything has been about cuts, cuts, cuts. and. We're actually doing things other than cuts. So I think this is great. Thanks. Just one question. Does that get us near the level? I knew it was horribly underfunded and had been for a significant period of time, and I'm, I'm pretty excited that we can make this move too. Does that get us near the level it needs to be consistently into the future, or are we still underfunded at the levels that we're presently at? This is closer to where we need for consumable items. It really does not address the whole textbook issue or the technology issue. Right. Okay. I think also to piggyback on that, um, I think you'll see Dr. Whipke when he's able to come in and start assessing what our needs are for resources. Um, it, it helps us get through the, the year and I think the principals and teachers probably have a big smile on their face out there right now hoping that uh, you guys approve this. But there are many other needs that need to be discussed into the future and and I know Dr. Whipke is uh, is looking at those and be working with John but there there's a lot more needs besides what we've just are getting ready to do here tonight anybody else all in favor yes yes opposed motion carries uh, 4.6 curriculum Dr. Rizzi in our last meeting, you were presented with uh, curriculums for AP statistics and AP government and politics. We ask that you approve as presented. Do I have a motion? motion. Second? Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 4.7, Sigma High School of Girls varsity soccer team trip, Dr. Rizzi. Yes, uh, the, the girls uh, varsity soccer team at Stepan High School are requesting permission to attend a soccer tournament in Quincy, Illinois on March 27th through 28th. This will be funded by their fundraising they did for the program. Motion. <coughs> Motion. Second. Second. Questions? All in favor? Oh, sorry, sorry. Mr. Krupa. Comment. <coughs> These trips always come to the school board, and just so everybody understands the process, these teams and these schools raise this money on their own, their parents, their fundraisers. That money is turned over to the school district. Correct me if I make a mistake here, John. That money is then 
deposited with the school district and the school district writes a check for these kids to be able to take this trip but it's not the taxpayers paying for it it's the parents and the fundraisers is that correct that's correct that is correct thank you very much all in favor yes opposed motion carries 4.8 gifts to the district mr. Crutchley two gifts to the district uh, one is uh, camera equipment for Fox High School and another is a uh, monetary donation to Merrimack Heights Elementary ask for you to approve both of those please a motion, motion. Second. second questions or comments yes sir thank you appreciate it gifts gifts are appreciated okay all right all in favor yes yes, yes. Uh, opposed motion carries uh consent or 5.0 consent grouping for action business um five uh mr brazil uh for the payment of bills tonight uh, we have a couple situations where it involves a board member uh, relationship uh, so we've busted this into four components and to try to make it easier we have instead of put check numbers on there we put the checks under what we're calling a warrant number so the warrant number is kind of date coded so the first one is 2014 1130 a which is the general one that everyone should feel free to vote for unless you have some personal objection B we're going to ask <laughs> Mr. Vernon Sullivan to abstain C, Mr. Krupa should abstain, and D, Mr. Laughlin may want to abstain. All right, uh, motion for A. Motion, make a motion. Second, questions, comments? Roll call, is it roll call? All right, all in favor? Yes. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? A carries. B, do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Um, all in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Three. Abstention? Motion carries. So A carries, B carries. C. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second? Uh, who's, who's abstention? Uh, this is Mr. Krupa's abstention. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Question or comment? I'm sorry. I, I got a, I got a comment about this stuff. I, I don't want to spend any of the school district's money unnecessarily, but I would like for somebody to call the attorney, our attorney, and ask if we need to do this, because my understanding is that if I don't profit from this, I don't have to abstain. This is my sister-in-law. I got nothing to do with it. This is Vern's son. He has nothing to do with it. I would like clarification from our attorney because this is a big pain for all of us to have to do it this way. And if we don't have to abstain legally, I'd like to know that. I, I, I agree, because I'm about to abstain and it's my money. I overpaid an account in which they gave us the money back. And because I overpaid an, overpaid an account and they wrote a check back to us for overpaying it, therefore I have to abstain for accepting it, my own It wasn't money. a gift? <laughs> No. <laughs> now you know how I've felt for a year. I've never abstained in my entire career here. I'm a little frustrated, so that's all right. We will. Let's go to. Uh, we will make sure that happens, Mr. Krupa. Thank you, Mr. Crutchley. Okay, so D, do I? Um, Don't do anybody I, make a motion. D, D, <laughs> I need. Do I have a motion on D? Motion. I'll, I'll second it. Second. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? I abstain. Motion carries. That is a little awkward. Horrible. Uh, Six point oh. We have uh, human resources items. Uh, Six point one is staff separations. It's in your revised materials, and ask that you approve steps staff separations from revised in the late materials. That's 6.1? Yes, that's 6.1. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? 
Second. Questions or comments? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Mullins. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Laughlin. Yes. Mr. Laughlin. Yes. 6.2. 6.2, we have employment and contract revisions, uh, employment of certified staff, employment of classified staff, and employment of substitute staff, and ask that you approve those as presented in the packet. There are no late materials on those. A, a, B, and C all together in one vote? Yes, please. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Questions or comments? Yes. Yes. Mr. Holloway? Yes. Mrs. Mullins? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, 7.1, superintendent report. The only thing that I have is I uh, want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas um, and have a uh, safe holiday. Hopefully everybody gets some time with their families. Uh, board reports, start with you, Mr. Brazil. I just wanted to uh, recognize Second High School Band. They were just invited uh, yesterday to the second year in a row perform at the state wrestling tournament, which is a pretty good deal. Um, and also want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and thank the staff and uh, the students for everything they do and making us a district that we can be. Mr. Krupa. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I didn't mention it back when I should have mentioned it, but the, the one report that I guess John did on the buses, we've got some old buses that we've got financial issues in the district that need to be addressed for the sake of the kids. If, if my memory served me when I looked through it, we've got 35 buses that are over 15 years old. Is that right? 32 or 35, yes, sir. Yeah, well, round it off. So I'm glad that we're looking at that stuff now and that you're planning on putting in place a schedule of replacements so that we can keep up with things we've in trying to balance the budget in past years, we've too often, I believe, cut back on replacement of buses and replacement of roofs and fixing parking lots for whatever reason. And I'm glad that we are now looking at these things and setting up schedules to correct the things that we've allowed to slip a little bit in the past. And I'm finished with that. And the other thing is I'd like to thank all those principals and assistant principals and people that I see back there for coming to the meeting. And I just want to say that I'm going to speak for the whole school board even though I can't. And we really appreciate the good work you guys do. And I'm done. No report. Thank you. No report. No report. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thanks, everybody, tonight. I love the participation. Have, uh, have a great and safe holiday, and uh, we'll see you in a month. Take care. Motion. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. I'll second. Second.